Rebecca just said it's really important to understand everything we do impacts everything else. And and that means that we have a very interesting way of looking at duality that we may never have looked at before. And that is, simultaneously, we must be accountable for and take responsibility for everything that we think, everything that we say, everything we do. And while we're taking responsibility for it, we also must be considering how it affects others for unity and the highest good for all. And that doesn't mean taking the white light pill of simply disregarding anything that doesn't work and saying, oh, it'll all be in the flow, oh, it'll all be okay, oh, I surrender to what everything's going to be. It means that we have to consciously take responsibility for our part while speaking our truth and surrendering to the highest good for all. It's a very interesting mix. And, and this links quite nicely with the term loyalty humans have been using the word loyalty or the term loyalty for their families, their loved ones, their friends. Or their country. Definitely, in a nationalistic way, in in their sense of political agendas of my country's the best country on earth or my country's the strongest country on earth. I think we as humans are going to need to make a, a bit of a change in understanding that loyalty really means loyalty to the truth, not to a person, not to your clan, not necessarily to your family, but a truer loyalty to the actual truth that guides everything. That requires a great deal of strength. For example, if a woman has a loyalty to her husband, which is admirable. That's a good thing that we want to encourage. And yet her husband hurts her best friend by saying something unkind or doing something not particularly to her standards. She has to be able to stand up and say, this was not okay, this is not the way I want to proceed. Not simply excuse her husband to her best friend and say, well, he didn't really mean it like that. She needs to address the situation and say, we can find a better way to interact with more harmony and more love. It means that each of us needs to stand up for the truth, be loyal to the truth in all of us, not only in our specific intimate relationships, friendships, or country understanding of loyalty. We have to do it for the loyalty of the truth by being kind, being compassionate, and yet still being truthful about what needs to occur. Not through our own ego, our belief system, or our attachment, but truth of the highest good for all. I find that people in business, business entrepreneurs that I know, people working in their jobs that they've been at going through this run of the mill, many of them are just finding themselves in limbo with a lack of the passion that they had in the past. What would you attribute that to? when someone is so passionate about going out and making money and being successful and then they get to this point where that doesn't seem to matter anymore how does the incoming energies of the Mayan calendar would you correlate that the incoming energies of them and we can talk about the Mayan calendar but would this correlate to what some people are going through these energies that are coming in having people relook at things and the way that they are responsible in their life Yes, that, that's, a, that's an amazing piece of wisdom that's being spread. Business people all over the world are realizing that what they've been doing for their own gain, for their own personal gain, or for taking care of their families, is now no longer so important. What business people, and this, this has to do with everyone, not just business people, but, but in business particularly, I think there's a great, great new emphasis, whether it's a new energy coming to Earth that's never been available to us before or not. I personally think that's the case. Business people are realizing that if everyone doesn't do well, if everyone doesn't make it successfully and positively, none of us are going to make it. So I think that old business paradigm or that old design of I'm going to get up and do the best I can do for myself, for my family, is actually 
dying away. And people are realizing that if we're not collectively doing what we do, none of us are going to be happy. None of us are going to survive in the way that humanity was originally designed to be together. And the way that can relate very beautifully to the Mayan calendar is the Pleiadians actually gave the Mayan calendar understanding to the Mayans. And what the Mayans have been saying for 5,000 years is that we need to see each other, we need to treat each other as another one of ourselves. We need to be all looking towards all of us, not each of us individually. And it's about energy. Energy is how we get there. The Mayan calendar has nothing to do with time. It's all related to energy. And the energies that are arriving right now through the Mayan calendar are channeling us more and more towards a greater opening towards unity, a greater understanding of unity, of I am another one of yourself. Whatever I do to me, I do to you. Whatever I do to you happens to me. So if I'm mean to somebody, I'm going to suffer. If I love myself, I'm loving someone else. If I love someone else, I'm going to benefit from that love. But it's not a reciprocal thing. It's about seeing everyone as the same. The energies that arrived on November 3rd last year were primarily feminine energies arriving to rebalance the terrible imbalance we are suffering from between the genders. Our divine masculine and our divine feminine are horribly out of balance. And the arrival of new feminine energy that happened last November to greet and accelerate the changes that are happening now are about allowing us all to move into the understanding of what is the divine feminine and how to each of us, regardless of our gender, how have we moved away from that and how do we need to invite it back in? Because as we invite it back in, we bring both the masculine and feminine back into harmony. The divine feminine is about surrender, going with the flow, unity, connection, communication, compassion, all of these things. And I would want to add, as a man, describing this, creativity. Because the feminine aspect is all about creativity. Colin, that's so important. That's the key thing that any male listener who might be hearing us right now might want to consider a bit is that the creative aspect is what's missing. And that's not just about getting into the intellect and brainstorming what you can do next in the world. It's about opening your heart to see what you're led to do for the highest good of all. And that leads right back to what you were asking about the business people who are changing and all of a sudden they've lost their passion. I would venture a guess that it's not their passion they've lost, Lorraine. I would venture a guess that what they've lost is the intellectual pursuit of their passion and that what they're opening to is a um, larger connection to heart energy that's leading their creative creative impulse. And I think we're going to see a tremendous switch from the the intellectual-driven paradigm to a heart understanding paradigm and that is also connected within and without the Mayan calendar about nature herself not only have men and women as genders been fighting filled with tension but the patriarchy in its linear somewhat destructive direction has also not only attacked the divine feminine for these many, many long years, but also attacked nature herself. And without nature, we're all lost. We must come back into a balance with nature. And once we do that, the heart understanding for both genders, not just men, but in balance with women, who can lead us and guide us will help everyone realize that heart and nature go together. I would like all of the listeners to hear Cullen and me say really clearly that inviting the divine feminine back in is not about 
asking the women to take over leadership of the world. It's not about that at all. It's not about taking things away from men. It's about leading all of us towards a more balanced place between our masculine attributes and our feminine attributes. And right now, since women's liberation, we have a number of women who've stepped into leadership roles, but how many of them are doing it from the divine feminine? From my observation, it appears that most of them are doing it from the patriarchal model. And we need to step away from the patriarchal model, both for women and men, to the feminine model of what's best for all. And once that takes place, the balance between the masculine and the feminine will work in tandem together to do a better job of balancing everything we do. We don't, we don't want to simply bash and complain about how the male gender has ruined everything all along. It's the out of balance that has ruined everything. So what, what we need to actually move towards together, male and female, is a simple balance within nature, within creativity, of balancing the male and the female so that the attributes of both genders can work simultaneously in a wonderful mix, a wonderful balance together. And what's beautiful about that is that we are still creating this model this balanced model with creativity and nature so it's just going to be a beautiful world as we see that being developed. I'd like to tell everyone that Rebecca and Cullen are going to be speaking in Colorado coming up here on May 1st so anyone who would like to hear them speak about the Mayan calendar, unity consciousness, how to manage our emotions and the ascension process, go on to larkma.com and check out the event calendar. That's going to be taking place in Longmont, Colorado on May 1st. And now you guys are going to two other cities. We're going to Mount Shasta, California and Reno, Nevada and those events will be listed on our website as well. Uh, we always have a listing of where we're going to be as it unfolds and as we are invited to go to other places. And, Loren, I would like to offer for the listeners how to spell LARCMA so they can easily find the website. It's L-A-A-R-K-M-A-A. And they may also subscribe, if they would like to, to our email list, and they will get a newsletter from us about where we're going, what we're doing, and ongoing world events. Now, very quickly, before we go on, let's, if anyone is listening and they're not familiar with Larkma, tell us who Larkma is and how you pronounce the name. Larkma is a group of loving Pleiadian beings who contacted Cullen and me for merging our energies with them to form a team to help the evolution of humanity. There are many people who have what is called um, channeled Pleiadian information in the past, and what Larkma does with Cullen and I is somewhat different because it requires both of us to be present, and they actually merge through the heart of our energy. We actually, <clears throat> we actually have to be touching. We, we can both speak the information that comes through us from them, but we must be touching in order for that information to come through us verbally. And we sometimes, one of us will speak sometimes and the other will speak at other times, but we notice that they seem to prefer Rebecca's voice, her resonance with their energy. So for the past couple of years, she's actually been the spokesperson, although I am sitting with her and... Receiving messages simultaneously. If, if I were to lip sync what she was saying, it would appear as though we're both saying exactly the same thing because we get the information simultaneously. I simply do not speak it. It's you guys are the male female balance. Yes. That's what they tell us. They that's that's a Lauren, that's a very interesting part of who we are and why we do this. Larkma and they 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 pronounce 
their name in a musical tone fashion. This is actually how they would say it. Larkma. They don't 